What's up you guys? So today we're at Santa Monica and I'm here with, uh, with Cindy and the family and friend Stephanie. Um, didn't make the sunset but I thought about something really cool um, for the sunset. I was actually planning on getting a time lapse and explaining how to do that with your drone, the DJI drone. But um, the sun is down. Uh, we totally missed it. But I'm not going to let that stop me from making this video. So. On top of this pier, there are rides, there's neon lights, there's arcades, there's people everywhere still. So I'm thinking it should be bright enough to still capture a nice time lapse. So I'm gonna explain the process I go. It's all shot in raw in a two second interval, all using the DJI Go 4 app and a second app that auto clicks the shutter button. So I'll explain all that in a minute. Let's get the drone up and um, see what we can come up with. I'm excited. Okay, so the first goal is to find a good place to shoot and actually get the drone up. Uh, I'm gonna try to face this way the whole time because I have all these lights. Um, the pier just like lighting me up and that's, I need to take what I can get, but I'm actually gonna move a little bit further away. There is a lifeguard tower straight ahead, number 16. So yeah, let's go up there and um, get the drone up. I did this a few times with low success until I actually figured it out. Um, the first time I did it, I didn't know you, that you could not shoot two second intervals uh, on the time lapse uh, for RAW format. It was only JPEG, so like I was in RAW and I didn't know, so I was thinking, why is it only 10 seconds? And it must be the buffer speed or something, it just the app limits it. And um, so I read up, only JPEGs can shoot two second intervals. I don't want to shoot JPEGs, I want to shoot RAW. So, my workaround, um, which some of you may have already read or looked up on this, but I'm going to show you firsthand, is I'm going to use an auto click, auto touch. It's, a, it's, a, it's an app that automatically touches your screen for you. I'm not, I'm not going to use a time lapse feature built into the app, I'm going to use that touch feature to automatically simulate me touching the shutter button on the screen for me every two seconds. So that's the goal, that's the plan, and um, I think I'm at finally a point where I can do it, so let's set up. You know, if this was not a time lapse and we were shooting just straight up footage off the Mavic at this hour, you would have to expose for the lights. But, um, you know, we're actually doing it to the point where we want all the shadows to be a little visible, but um, still have its natural look. And that's why compressed footage doesn't compare to raw footage. And essentially, because we're shooting raw photos and we're gonna combine it into a sequence at 24 frames per second, or 30 frames per second, whatever we choose, um, it's gonna be raw footage. Okay, so we should be all set. So we have auto clicker we want. Um, I'm going to hit start single target. And um, we have two second delay, as you can see. Then we have a 20, 20 uh, millisecond duration. So in other words, this is gonna be how long this simulated touch is gonna be held down for on the screen. 20 milliseconds, that's pretty much what you want anyway, so. We are all good to go. I am now going to move my clicker over, switch the position to the top right corner. So this app's a little tricky. You have to actually move this box, playing clothes box, which I didn't know about at first, to where that little black arrow is touching where you want it to actually touch. So we are all set now. GPS mode is enabled. Let's get this guy up and see what we can do. I'm so excited for this. Um, it's always a little tricky to do this with one hand. We're good though. Let's send her up. And head out. All right, so. Okay, so we want to first get the position we want, obviously. So, um, I kind of want to go a little higher. This is a really cool carnival scene that we can shoot. Let's go ahead and get this. And there's actually so much more light up here. There's so much more light up here than I thought there was going to be. Um, I mean, I knew it was going to be bright, but I mean, holy crap, look at this. This whole place is lit up. Let's go ahead and get this. So, I think we're in position. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to photography mode. We're almost there. 
I'm gonna drop the ISO a little bit because 1600 is just way too high. And then, and then I'm gonna lower my shutter speed to compensate that way. Again, we're shooting raw, so we're gonna have a lot of control over dynamic ranges here once we are done. So we're gonna one over 10, maybe, maybe I'll do one over five, uh, which is one fifth of a second. That's how long the shutters we open for. And that's gonna create some motion blur um, per photo. So uh, because of that, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna turn down my ISO to even 100, as low as it can get. The next thing I'm gonna do is find my focus point. I usually choose my foreground, so I'm going to just hit this uh, Ferris wheel. If it, if it works. And I'm gonna switch to manual. Now we're locked on focus. We're still, um, we're still good. Next thing to do is to start our shoot. So we're in raw format. All we gotta do now on the screen is hit play. So now, as you can see, I'm not touching the screen, my hands are free. And this thing's just touching for me. I can just kick back and relax. So um, while it's shooting there, uh, I just want to like make a quick note. I almost didn't decide to do this. I almost said, you know what, I actually, I preferred the sunset, but um, I brought my stuff with me anyways because I knew that shooting this in these conditions, even though dark, is better than not shooting at all. Don't fight the idea of not shooting when you have an opportunity. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity. Look at this time lapse. This is actually come out really awesome. I already know it. So, um, you know, the next steps will be to take these clips and put it into like Adobe Bridge and do some camera raw processing in bulk with all the photos, which we will go over. I knew it would still look cool either way, but I wasn't sure. That's the thing. I just wasn't sure. So I decided to do it regardless, and this here we are. One more thing. I am primarily shooting stuff like this for stock footage. If you do not know what stock footage is, and you are a creator who shoots video, whether it's on a DSLR, a cinema camera, or even a smartphone, yes, a smartphone, smartphones can do this too, you really need to look up black box. You may have heard a little bit about black box, maybe not, maybe you have. Black box is amazing. So let me just put it in short form for you, and I'll make a different video all about black box. Black Box will let you as a creator take your footage, put it on Black Box the platform, and they will do the work of spreading it out and distributing it to like Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, Video Blocks, Pond5. It's a really cool thing. It's like a miracle for a video creator. It lets you focus on the creativity rather than all the requirements that all these stock sites require you to have. So um, that's a huge deal. And uh, it, it makes it a lot more fun, makes it a lot more practical, a lot more ideal to pursue stock footage. So the other part of that is it lets you collaborate with other people very easily. In other words, if you shoot with a model or if you uh, make a deal with somebody like a costume store or something to use their outfits for the stock footage, you can literally split commission with them for the lifetime of that clip. It's a, what, what, what is it? Intellectual property, that's what it's called. And, uh, that's just short for saying, you know, that's your property, it's your right. Um, if you split it with somebody and you give someone else some rights to that revenue, then it's partially theirs too, however much percentage you gave them. And uh, when you pass away and when you die, all that footage that you have on Black Box that's up there selling will be passed down to whoever you will it to. So it's like a really cool thing to have. And if you really focus on it, I know there's a lot of potential in it. And I've, I've sold quite a few clips through it before. Not enough to make a living. That's where I want to eventually head. But um, yeah, that's what we're doing here. And I thought I might as well make this tutorial out of it. If it helps you, uh, then that's great. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer. It's just floating right there, I can see it. Actually, I see another drone too. That's quite funny. Um, and yeah, so, so I'm gonna play this time lapse right after. And I'm gonna go out there and enjoy some time at the arcades and stuff with Cindy and Mia. And, um, and our good friend Stephanie who's down to visit. So I hope this helped guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. That next video will consist of editing the workflow, Premiere. I'm gonna dive into more Premiere tutorials. I don't know what else to say. Thank you guys. Peace out. You'll see, there's my drone, right there in the center of the screen. And I swear, I swear I just saw somebody else's. Oh yeah, there it is moving right now right there that's 
That's the other drone. And there's mine. Thank you.